Okay, good morning, folks. Can everybody hear me? Great, I think so. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Um, we're going to give folks a couple minutes to log on. Um, this session, oh, I forgot to put this up. This is getting stuff done virtually. Um, we have kind of an abbreviated period of time. This is actually the full workshop of this, this uh, content. It's about a three and a half hour workshop. We're not gonna do that today, obviously. We're just gonna pull out um, some of the key points. Uh, but also, because the world has changed, we're gonna spend a little bit more time than we normally do talking about uh, getting stuff done in a virtual space. So let's wait a minute um, for folks to join. And, and while, while we're waiting, if everyone could put in the chat um, their name, their role, just so I get a sense of you know, what kinds of work you're doing. And then if you can just list one or two things that you would say as of right now, given this new context, what's getting in the way of getting stuff done? Just put down some thoughts about what's getting in the way for you. Great, and I can see people have already started doing that, which is terrific. So in addition to your name and, and also maybe your location, that'd be good to know as well, um, if you haven't already done so. Um, what's getting in the way of getting stuff done? Thank you, David. Thanks for getting us started there, nice job. Is that a Yankee cap we got on? What, what do we got there, David? No, it's actually uh, Brooklyn Industries, and it's, it's a water tower uh, okay. on, the, on, the, on the cap. Very nice, very nice. I'm a Met fan, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of guessed that, I think. Um, good. So, so far, yeah, boundaries between home and work. Sometimes work never stops. We'll certainly talk about that. Being in the dark, I don't know if that's literal or figurative, but we'll find out about that in a moment. Or actually, maybe we can ask Janelle. Can you maybe just explain that a little bit? What do you mean by being in the dark? Where's Janelle? Janelle, you want to explain that? Is that Janelle? I thought I saw Janelle. You know, Felix, going once. All right, maybe um, she's having some issues with uh, with the tech. Let's see. Never knowing what's going on. Oh, that's Janelle again. Janelle has all the has some good stuff in the chat, but I want to hear from her directly. Um, let's see. Tech issues. Yes, that sounds about right. Um, time management when meetings have doubled. Meaning the number of meetings has doubled, is that right? Yeah, mm hmm Yep, everything's a priority because everything's new. It has to be figured out, yep. Um, Gail's worried about not having a social life. Now, is that a new thing, Gail, as a result of the pandemic or is that, you know? Um... <laughs> no, because there's, now there's no boundaries between work life and social life. Everything is just work life. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Gotcha. I was teasing. Gail, Gail's on my team, so I'm allowed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, struggling with, uh, so Janice, I'm sorry, Janice, I believe I got that right. Hope I got that right. Um, is struggling with time management, uncertainty of what's happening, boundaries, mental health struggles. Yep. While trying to be productive, I think you've named a lot of them. Old systems for new issues. So I'm going to ask Thomasina if you can say a little bit more about that. Where's Thomasina? There she is. We can't hear you for some reason, Thomasina. Yeah, I'm still not able to hear you. Okay, Janelle is explaining that there is some tech issues there. That's fine. Thomasina, let, let's, I want to get you in. Let's work on your tech. Um, let's see who else we have here. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you, David. Got that. Um, uh, 
Oh, I think you just connected, Thomas. You know, let's see if that worked. No. All right. I think we have some good stuff here. Um, lots of, yeah, lots of issues. And some of these things are challenges that I'm going to probably guess um, are not, didn't just appear with COVID-19, but maybe got exacerbated or maybe took on a different form. Um, and some things are actually directly related to working in this way. So we're gonna try to pull up, um, you know, try to lift up some of those challenges and hopefully some of the, some of the um, uh, suggestions on how to, um, how to address it. I wanna be really clear. I'm not sure anyone's figured this out and I certainly have not, right? I have some thoughts about this that I wanna share. Um, and, and there are also some parts of this particular training module that I think are still relevant. So we will touch on some of those as well, okay? So let me let me um let me just ask you all to just grab a piece of paper or you can write this actually in the chat. You don't have to send it to everybody if you don't want to, but I want you to write down a few numbers. First, I want you to write down as of now, given this new reality, I want you to write down the hours that you typically work each day. Okay? Just think about how many hours now you're working each day. I want you to think about how many times a day you're checking email. And if you have email set to just ping you every time someone sends you a message, that's gonna be a pretty big number, right? Even though you're not saying check, if it's coming to you, just try to guess how many times that happens a day. It should be a pretty big number. Um, how many hours of virtual meetings you're in per day? And I believe most meetings, if not all these days are virtual, right? So how many hours are you sitting in front of the camera probably in a virtual meeting? And I do mean the visual kind, I don't mean phone calls in this case. And then finally, how many emails are currently in your inbox? Now, whenever I do this workshop, people have a hard time remembering. Most of you are sitting in front of your computer, so you can actually get a pretty accurate number. So what is the number in your inbox, whether it is read or unread, the total number in your inbox? Does this all make sense? If it's not clear, just unmute yourself or write it in the chat. Uh, but we want these four numbers jotted down somewhere. If that makes sense, let me see a thumbs up for folks. Okay, at least three people understand what I'm talking about. That's great. Oh, I got four. Oh, we got two more from one person. I'll count that as five and a half. Good. All right, excellent. I think we got it. So these are the four questions I want you to consider right now. And you know, this is not like the oppression Olympics. I'm not looking for people to inflate their numbers about how many meetings they're in. Just try to be as honest as possible. Thank you, Zachary, for having the courage to put it up for everybody. Nice job. Constantly checking emails. Okay, two to three Zooms a week um, with your staff. Great. Okay, other folks, let's let's see if um, you don't have to put you don't have to post it up in the chat, but just want to make sure you have those numbers handy for yourself. Um, okay, so while you're doing that, let me let me get going here on. Um, let's see here, yeah, let me get just talk a little bit about the frame of uh, of this work. So you know the 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 problem I think in general that we have um, when it comes to this work is that, you know, there are these two incredibly precious resources that we have. Um, and and, and they are they're so important that you don't even realize that you have them sometimes, right? These two incredibly important, wow, Katie is at inbox zero. I wanna hear more about that in a moment. I think we have someone who could be doing this workshop instead of me, so that's good. Uh, we'll get a chance to pick Katie's brain in a moment. But anyway, going back to these two resources, these are these two, Carrie also, wow. Um, we have two precious resources, and the, the issue with these resources of time and attention is that you cannot increase them. You can't say, oh, today's gonna be kind of a busy day. I need a 30-hour day today. Um, 
when you can't slow them down, right? I mean, it's something that feels like they're moving slower, faster. Um, but that's, that's true for time. And it also turns out that you cannot increase the amount of tension, you, the amount of attention that you have. That is also finite. Um, let's see by, raise, by a show of hands here, who's like really good at multitasking? Let me just see some hands. Who's like a good multitasker? Yeah, I see a couple of hands go up, good. Um, here's the problem though, multitasking makes you stupid. Um, and so I don't recommend it. Uh, the problem is that if you actually break down people who are multitasking, what they're actually doing is serial unitasking. They're doing one thing and stopping and doing something else and then stopping and doing something else and stopping and never getting deep enough into one particular project to do it really well. And so at the end of the day, you're actually being less efficient than if you were just focused on one thing and brought it to some level of completion or some stage of, a, of accomplishment instead of stopping and, stop, stopping and starting and stopping and starting because unfortunately, the stopping and starting also takes time. You have to sort of get back into what you were doing before and that's where the inefficiency lies. Um, it also ends up, people who multitask a lot, um, and sometimes we're forced to, I'm not saying that it's always by choice, um, that people multitask, you, you sort of lose the ability to focus because you're so used to never getting really deep, deep into a project. So we actually want to figure out a way to create more opportunities to get to that level of focus. And so a lot of times people think about this work and they call it time management. But as I said, you cannot manage time. Time is going to move on without, with or without you. You can't slow it down, speed it up, add or take away. Um, a better way, and, and the same is true for attention that we just, talk, uh, we just talked about, a better way to think about this is actually action management, that we are going to constantly make decisions about how are we going to use our two precious resources of time and attention. Can't do everything, right? Um, time is limited. And so we have to be really specific and clear and directive and thoughtful about how we're going to use our time and attention. That makes sense? Um, I, I will just, if nothing else from this workshop, I'm gonna ask you that in the next, the next week, so you can start on Monday if you want. Starting on Monday, just you know, have like this running dialogue with yourself about time and attention. What choices am I making about how I'm going to use those two resources? Just the awareness of that ends up giving you uh, some insights that may help you make better decisions about your time and attention. So just um, let, let's think about that, okay? Um, all right, so here's what I'd like to talk about today. Um, we have our P's and Q's. Uh, that's sort of the agenda. This is again an abbreviated version of this. I'm gonna try to get it all, get as much in as possible in the limited time we have. Um, but here are the P's and Q's, are you ready? We're gonna talk about priorities. We're gonna talk about people. We're gonna talk about projects. We're gonna talk about email. And then we're gonna have time for questions, I hope. That all make sense? P's and Q's, make sense? Yeah, we're good? I see one thumbs up, two thumbs we're up. Good. Anyone have an issue with this slide? David, what's the issue with this slide? E. Thank you. Email. <laughs> this was your dexterity check and most of you failed. Um, uh, these are not just P's and Q's, there's also an E in there, right? But I'm gonna try to convince you that actually email should be called P-mail instead, okay? And I'll, I'll talk more about that. All right, so priorities. Um, I want you actually, before we do that, I want you all, again, take out, um, take out a, another same piece of paper or just you know, a place where you can write something down I want you right now, just write down all the things that are on your mind that you would say are priorities. Things that you need to think about, do, work on, calls you have to make, emails you have to send, big projects, small things. It could be personal, but let's try to focus on professional here, right? Just start jotting down the things that, you are, that are on your mind that you have to get done. I'm gonna give you like a full minute to do that, go. So for folks who are joining, we're just jotting down all the things in our minds that are, what you might say are priorities, things you have to get done at some point. Thank you. 
Wow, Nick, 3,200 emails. That's something. Melanie, 4,266 emails. A lot of emails. Brianna's got 3,000 emails. And Erica, 6,000. Wow, I think we have the winner so far. Okay, everyone have their list down? I know it's not complete. You can probably write a million things in that list, right? Everyone have their, their list down? All right, now look at that list and let me ask you, if I asked you to put those into these categories, could you do it? So these categories are, and this is from Stephen Covey. He's done a lot of work on productivity. Um, he talks about taking like these action items or projects that are on your mind and trying to categorize them according to importance and urgency. So give that some thought. Look at your list again and just think about which box would you put those things in there? And this is obviously kind of subjective or some things are very clear, like what's important and urgent. Um, but try to get some thought. There are probably some things that you can put into each of these four boxes. I'm gonna ask folks to unmute themselves and if, if we can hear you, I'd love to hear an example of something that's important and urgent. What's important and urgent? Who wants to start us off? I'll go first, Abe. Uh, Rachel's here, Packy from Buffalo. Um, I run after school for 21st century pre-K to fourth grade in a school. Um, we're community-based. Um, we also run summer camp and we are doing it in person this year. Um, so all of my stuff is urgent. My main concern is, so our kids being in Buffalo, it's not district, so they come from all over. So some of my kids are either on a bus or in school or after school from 7.30 a.m. until 7 o'clock p.m. Um, so that's now 12 hours of time that their parents now have to fill. Um, some of our parents are not capable. Um, I just was at a family's house last week. They don't have food. They just were um, placed out of a shelter. They don't speak English. Um, I'm actually, that's why I'm super ADHD today because I'm trying to find them stuff. <laughs> um, so that is an urgent concern. All of my stuff is urgent. So like our summer camp, safety, our kids, their uh, mental health, what are they going to look like when we get them back? Um, I'm yep. super nervous about that. Um, like I said, you have a lot. Heard, there's a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah, in that's box all here. in one. That's all my red box. I'm a red box today. Wow. Um, and that's okay. just the stuff that's urgent. I don't really have, I didn't put anything else down because okay. there's so much that's urgent. I'm kind of there. So. Absolutely. Thank you so much for starting. And the truth is, a lot of times, the stuff that is in that red box, the important and urgent stuff, that's often what comes to mind right away. And if you had more time to list the things on your mind, you'll get other things that show up. I wonder if folks had something that was not, that you would not put in the red box that you want to share. Anything that's not super urgent, not super important? Anybody? No judgment here. Hello, my name is Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. Hi. Uh, I do data entry for uh, the school's attendance. And what I don't feel urgent right now is uh, backtracking now to make sure that all of the uh, students' names that were not registered in the program, for example, but did attend the class uh, because the teacher, of course, wanted to have students participate. These students, I then go back and backtrack and make sure that they are, if they got enrolled later on in the semester, that their name is captured and their attendance is captured. So at the moment when I'm doing the bulk of my data entry, it's students that are registered and getting their name into the roster. And then, then I go back and do the non-urgent, which is I go back and double check, was the student ever registered? And then if I find one that did register, then I put them in. So yeah. their name then like moves from a not important, non-urgent kind of situation to, okay, it's important, but it's not super urgent right now because I'm at the end and I can put all this information in there. It slows down a little bit for me. Excellent, excellent. That's a really good example. Appreciate all the detail you provided. Really good example that, because that, this is one of the things I want to just mention, and then, and then we have to move along. I'm realizing that this is not the amount of time I normally have for this. But um, 
some of these things, first of all, right now, isn't it true that the, the definition of important has changed in the last few months? Like we've all gotten some perspective now on what importance, you know, how that might look different now. And things that seemed important on March 12th or whatever certainly look different now. Um, so this is a pretty dynamic way of thinking about what's on your sort of on your radar on your to-do list. Um, but there are some things that, you know, that for one person would be really, really important and urgent and someone else, not so much. I would imagine there are people on this call, whether you want to admit to it or not, who would say that data entry is not, is not that important to me right now or not that urgent to me right now. Like I got to go find these programs for these kids. I got to find, I got to help these parents out. Stopping to put that in a spreadsheet, this doesn't seem that important to me. And yet other people who have responsibilities for it would, would say differently about that, right? So this is very subjective. Um, let me ask this question and you can either say it or put it in the chat box. Um, which of, I'm um, sorry, wh which of these boxes, I just want to give you the answer, which of these boxes would you start with then? Like if you have things in these four boxes, where do you start? I just gave you the answer, right? Doesn't that make sense? If the building's on fire, you want to put that thing out, okay? What's the last box you want to work on? I can't hear you if you're muted, but if you want to put it in the chat box, that's fine. The, the green one is not important. The green yeah, one. The, the green box, right? Because it's not important, not urgent, okay? Okay, so I gave you the answers, but those are the easy ones. What, which box is number two? Which box is number two? Let me just see the votes on the, uh, on the chat box here. Who wants to vote? So we're looking at either blue or orange, and I apologize if you're uh, orange. colorblind. You think orange? Okay, I hear one vote for orange. Anyone else want to vote? See a lot of orange? orange. A lot of orange? Anyone want to make an argument for blue? Okay, Nick is being real honest here, right? Orange, but in practice, I often go with blue, right? <laughs> Appreciate that, Nick. Um, yeah, sometimes that blue box is just like, I know it's not important, but man, this thing has popped up right now. And, or, you know, my, my friend wants to tell me something. It's not really that related to what I'm doing, but it seems like it's important to him. You know, there's stuff like that that shows up, right? Um, so the answer is in fact, orange. And but a lot of people would actually say that the blue one is where they want to spend most of their attention. And the reason why the orange box is so important is because as I think, I forget who was talking, I think as Jeanette was saying, um, so this is really why, where you want to spend most of your time, okay? You really want to spend more of your time in box number two because what happens to things that are in box number two that don't get taken care of? Where do they go? They go to box number one. And if anyone has been in crisis mode, um, which is really what box number one represents, if you're in crisis mode all the time and your time and attention is just going into being in that box all the time, how do you think your mental health is going to be? It's really hard to live in that space for too long, right? And so you have to sort of continue to ask yourself, have I done enough things in box number two to prevent getting them into box number one? And the more you're clear about the things that you have going on for you that are really important, but not yet urgent, um, you've got to find time to spend working on those things. Super, super important. Okay, I'm going to move on. Let's talk about people. Um, how are people connecting with their teams? Um, this is now a much harder thing to do. I'm assuming at least some, if not most of you, have a staff that you work with. How are you connecting with people who report to you? Who just wants to give me a quick answer to that? Uh, we have Zoom meetings. Okay. How often are your Zoom meetings? Uh, twice a week. Twice a week. Okay. Someone else, I see people are working with email. Um, WebEx, um, Thomasina writes here. Zoom, phone, and email. Okay. And generally, has this been helpful? Yeah, sort of, okay. Um, here's a question I wanted to ask, and this is kind of my own experience, and Gail knows this, because I've, I've mentioned this with my team. Um, I feel like we have never communicated more than we have now. That the, 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 the frequency and even the quality of communication has taken on a different meaning now, right? Um, it's much more regular. We actually find it easier to schedule time to meet um, most, most weeks. Um, uh, but do we say anything? Oh, interesting question. I'm, Thomas, you know, I'm not sure if your mic is working, but I want to hear more about that. What do you mean by, or maybe you can write it into the chat. What do you mean by, but do we say anything? Oh, and I see Gail's giving a thumbs up. You know, Gail, your boss is on the line here. Um, so if you want to 
If you want to talk no, about No, I meant I, that thumbs up was for you when you said that we're communicating more. <laughs> okay, got it. Got <laughs> Good save, Gail. <laughs> um, oh, sometimes we're just working to work. Uh huh. Uh, bombarded with emails. Who feels like they've gotten now more emails than before? Than before COVID. Okay, I see a few hands go up. Um, yeah, so. Can I respond on the, but do we say anything? Yeah, please. So I convene my team twice a week, but it's usually to pass on information about things that have to get done throughout the week and to check in with them that they're okay. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I spend the bulk of my time a day in meetings that are just being re just reiterating things that have been shared out in emails. So you're calling our time together, but we're not really saying anything different. And I think that that's a key okay. piece to the extra time that's needed now. Excellent point. Thank you for adding that. That's great. That's really, really important. Um, I will just share that from our team, we have been using, um, and I think the frequency, and I'll speak for myself, like I have not been as disciplined about this lately as I could be, but we started to use Slack as a way to have um, asynchronous communication, meaning that we don't all have to be on the same thing at the same time. Um, but I've asked my team that every morning I ask them just to do a quick check-in, like, what are you working on today? What meetings are you in? It's a few bullets. Everyone can see it. So we all kind of know what's going on. Um, but as, as their manager, I also just get, um, you know, the kinds of things that I could see in person in an office that I can't see anymore. Now I can kind of get a sense of what people are doing. Um, and I don't mean it's like to control or to like, you know, micromanage or to, you know, lord over people. But really, I just want to know, like, if there's something going on that I need to know about, this is a great way to know it. If there's information that I learn about during the day, I know that someone actually is already working on that. And I might be able to contribute to their work or provide some support. So I have found that to be incredibly helpful. And at the end of the day, people are checking out by saying, like, here's what I worked on today still is struggling with this issue, need help on this thing. Um, and I don't think it takes very long. Gail, how, how long does that checkout take for you? Oh no, less than a minute. Yeah, it's real quick. Um, yeah, it's real quick. quick. Yeah. Uh, and I have found it's just been really helpful to get, to keep tabs on how everyone's doing in that way. So wanna sort of offer that as a, as a tool. You might use a different tool than Slack. I've heard people using Trello for this or even just emails to the entire group. We'll talk more about why I don't recommend the email idea, um, but if that's if that works for your team, then you know I would explore that. Okay. Abe, um, can I also say that it, it sets the priorities for the day also? Yes. Do you want to say more about how you experience that? Yeah. So um, you know, I, I just um, focus on what I need to get done that day, and I try to stick with what I've written in the the slack you know if it's four bullets i gotta get budget stuff done i gotta do dycd i follow that and that's like my main focus for the day and it helps me to stop from multitasking and going into other things so i'm more focused yeah i mean i think that's one of for me it was also one of the um surprises about this is that I thought I was doing it to sort of help other people know what was going on, but I found myself benefiting from just putting down at the start of the day, here are my objectives for today, here are my priorities for today. It helps a lot, so I highly recommend that. Um, I wanna also just recommend that people find time to connect, to connect with individuals on a more regular basis than in person. Um, just because people need that connection to their supervisors much more than before. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to spend more time in those meetings, right? It could be shorter meetings more frequently, but I would err on the side of frequency over the length of time of a meeting it's because the more contacts you have, the pace is picked up quite a bit. And so um, a lot of research is coming out and I was saying that for people who were working from home before COVID-19, that like regular contact with supervisors makes a big difference. You also want to find ways to have peers connect with one another. Uh, and maybe that is kind of social stuff. I don't know if people are doing that. Um, I heard about a, someone who talked about, um, they call it POETS, which is an acronym for put off everything tomorrow, Saturday. And just for like Friday for like half an hour, they just get on a Zoom and just, you know, just talk about whatever's on their minds. And it's just a great way to have people connect with one another so that not every single conversation has an agenda or is about work. Um, so just think about ways to do that. 
I want to ask, um, yes, you can assign individual tasks for people on Slack. You can sort of directly message people or you can have it visible by the group. So something to think about there as well. It's been a really good tool. I highly recommend it. And we weren't using it before COVID. It really became a need during this, during this, uh, this time. Um, I also just want to ask quickly, um, I don't have the answers now because it's sort of scrolled up, but are, do people find that they're working longer hours now? I think we heard that in the very beginning, right? Longer hours. Um, it's so important. The last bullet I, I was going to put here um, is you also have to take care of yourselves and figure out ways to actually have your own alone time. So the need to connect with other people is really important, as is the, the need to connect with yourself. And I will speak for myself here and say that I used to have much more time just like with my own thoughts during my commute um, as I was walking to get lunch, you know, like I would just have time to stop and think. And I feel like that time's been eroded. And I'm sort of consciously trying to figure out ways to reclaim some of that time um, to, to bring that back. So I just want to, you know, pass it along to you all. And while we're talking about, you know, meetings here, so I'm looking at the clock. Um, just a few thoughts about virtual meetings. Um, and the shorthand here is, I'm going to call it Zoom Doom, right? Although I think m more than just Zoom is being used these days. Um, a few things that people are, are observing about this era of, of COVID-19. First one is exhaustion. And if this resonates for you, just let me know in the chat or give me a thumbs up or something. Um, the, when you consider, um, how much, first of all, there are probably more meetings taking place now than before. Is that correct? That's certainly been my experience. Um, what would have been maybe two weeks worth of meetings, I find is now happening in less than a week uh, because there's no travel time to, to think about anymore. Um, the ability to just like find that hour when everyone's available has gotten a little bit easier because of the the, you know, the, the lack of, you know, people just sort of sitting in their homes for the most part. Um, and so there, are, first of all, there are just more of them. But also um, what people are studying is that um, when you are on a video call and it's happening right now, when you're 